<laughs> well, um, I'll, I'll tell. First of all, I'll tell you exactly what I think about Richard Dawkins. Okay. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, I'm not sure I can get this complete in everything he said. But did you say? Do I believe that from what I said tonight that I believe Richard Dawkins is full of mud? Yes. Something like that. I think you're trying to be polite. Okay. Um, okay. Well, well. First of all, I, I was lucky enough to be friends, and just personal friends, it wasn't a big deal, but I was really lucky enough to be friends with the late Stephen Jay Gould. Um, and I thought Stephen was the finest writer on biology ever, and certainly on evolutionary theory. And I think it always infuriated Dawkins, the Oxford Don, that this Jewish kid from Brooklyn was better at the King's English than Dawkins was. But with the passing of Steve Gould, and Steve unfortunately died in 2002, I have to say, that I think Richard Dawkins is the clearest and most lucid writer on evolutionary theory that's alive on the planet today. His book, The Selfish Gene, I think is a classic of explaining behavioral biology. His book called Unweaving the Rainbow is a marvelous long essay on how science doesn't diminish our appreciation for the beauty of nature. It enhances it. And he writes brilliantly and well. Um, he also, as I mentioned, is quite frankly, quite frankly a thoroughly evangelical atheists. Now, you know, I'm not trying to be flippant. Some of my best friends are atheists. Um, in science, that's not a big deal. And we work in science, we don't know what anybody else's religious point of view is because science is science and we get along just fine. Um, I do think that Richard is mistaken on matters of religion. And I think that occasionally he strays over from science into philosophy and theology and he doesn't always realize it. He thinks he's still doing science when he's out bashing religion. And I think he's gone well beyond that point. Now, I also have to say that I consider Richard to be a friend and an honorable guy. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, I, the first book that I wrote, public book that I, popular book I was called Finding Darwin's God. Um, and uh, Richard and I were both not the same studio, but we run a radio talk show together on public radio. Um, and he praised Finding Darwin's God. It was up, it was just like bizarre. Uh, if any of you read the book, about two-thirds of it is defensive evolution. Then there's a chapter that frankly takes issue with the position of Dawkins and other materialists and so forth. But he's just praising my book up and down, and I'm going, man, you know, has he gotten to chapter six yet? So we say, this is a wonderful book. I'm recommending it to all my Christian friends in Britain. It's a brilliant defensive evolution. Then he goes, now mind you, I've only read the first half. <laughs> so so what and I think, oh, okay, that's cool. So four or five days later, he's on a, a trans-US tour. I get an email from Richard, he's now in Los Angeles, and he goes, I have now read the rest of your book. And needless to say, I disagree with everything in chapter six and the follows where I dealt with religious issues. But then he said, and this is one of the reasons I, I, I decided to respect the guy. He says, you try to explain the multiple universe hypothesis of Barrow and Tipler. You misunderstand it. And the reason I know you misunderstand it is the way you interpret it is the same way that I, Dawkins, first understood it, and I was corrected at a scientific conference by Frank Barrow himself. He then gave me the reference to the article in the journal Nature. I looked it up, but God he was absolutely right. Um, and every thing since the first, every printing since the first printing in hard, hardcover has had the correct explanation. So if you have a paperback book, it's fine. What I appreciated about Dawkins was I said a lot of the th things in that book that were critical of him. What he could have said is he could have written a review saying, look what an idiot this Miller guy is. He doesn't even stand the Barrow and Tipler hypothesis, therefore why should you believe anything else that he says? And instead, he did sort of the gentlemanly thing, which is, you made the same mistake I did, let's correct that mistake, and then let's argue about things that really matter. So I respect and appreciate him for that. We agree, I think, fundamentally on science. We disagree fundamentally on philosophy and theology. So I wouldn't say he's full of mud, I just think he's wrong. And he would, if he were standing here tonight, he would think that I was profoundly wrong in this issue. Yes, sir.